Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and this video here is going to be talking about where to get ancient science books, engineering research, AI cores, and a lot of the other rare items in Kenshi that aren't really self-evident of how and where to get them. So uh, this video is going to be mostly just an info dump. Um, you can listen to it mostly through audio. A lot of the information is going to be basically uh, through audio. I'm only going to basically show you map locations and areas on the map as I explain them. Also, before we jump into um, looking through the entire map location, I would like to show you this page here on my website. I have uh, two guides on my website. One is called Mid Game Zones Loot Guides and Map Locations, and the other one is End Game Zones Loot Guides and Map Locations. These two pages on my website will show you every single zone in the game as well as uh, the notable things to find in that zone like let's look at the swamp or sorry the south wetlands you uh there's two big notable things in the south wetlands you got the swamp ninja hideout which is kind of in the middle of the uh the middle northeast i guess would be the uh or just the northeast uh, portion of south wetlands and then you also have the slave markets so you might be wondering like okay well what's at the swamp ninja pace so you, Shade is there, one of the, uh, the, he's the leader of the base. If you wonder what Shade drops, Edge type 1 to 3 weapon. And he also has a 20,000 bounty on his head. And then you might be wondering a little bit about the slave markets. Like, what, what can we find there? Well, the slave markets are head, uh, home of Headshot and Ray, two unique recruits, as well as various other unique recruits that you can find and, uh, they they vary from name they vary in names sometimes unique recruits don't come with a set in stone name like ray or headshot or soman or pia or digna or horse or any of those sometimes uh they uh have unique dialogue like there's one guy that you can find at the slave markets that i know of that has dialogue about building walls he uh really really likes building walls and um that is one of the unique companions that you find there believe it or not. So uh, I'm probably going to start in the northwestern portion of the world and we are going to basically go zone by zone and we're going to look at what's in the zone and I'm going to explain a little bit of, uh, of each of these things. So first we're starting at Leviathan Coast. You'll notice there's a few fallen towers in this zone. Or actually, sorry, there's one fallen tower in this zone. There's a few fallen towers in the game though. Fallen Towers are essentially just uh, doodads that serve no purpose, have no loot there, and they just the only purpose they serve is to make the world look more crowded. Uh, Lost Library, those are usually dungeons that require lockpicking in order to enter. You'll see a Lost Library right up here at the top. They are usually, uh, a lot of vendor trash is found there, some maps that will mark other Lost Libraries or other locations on your uh, map. And that is really it. There's a lot of uh, destroyed books, uh, destroyed parchment. There's a few locked chests inside the lost library. Like I said, the front door is locked, so you will need um, decent lock picking in order to get inside. Old Empire Watchtower is another one here. The Old Empire Watchtower often contains ancient, or sorry, they, uh, they contain mostly crafting materials and vendor trash. And it's one of those locations where the loot is scattered all across the ground. Like the, the, the location itself is destroyed and all of the loot you can find there is scattered across the ground on the outside. And there's two old Empire Watchtowers in that zone. So, Last but not least, you have Lost Armories. And as you can see, there's three Lost Armories in this zone. Uh, they contain a wide variety of trade skill materials as well as typically one or two edge type weapons and usually some specialist or masterwork quality armor and ranged weapons. Uh, these buildings typically have no enemies in them. Sometimes there are a few security spiders inside the buildings. And of course, you will need high lock picking in order to enter the building, as well as open all of the safes and chests inside of the building. So moving to Cannibal uh, Plains, you'll notice this zone has one armory rune and three cannibal villages. It's also got something called an old village. Um, give me one second. I am actually uh, I'm pulling up my once my other computer stops lagging. I want to pull up the other mid-game zone list on this computer. That way I can give you an accurate...
Sorry for the delay. Cannibal villages, though, they, uh, I mean, as the name suggests, they have a lot of cannibals. They, uh, they have no loot. Typically, I don't even think they have, like, a container inside that you can find loot in. in. I'm, uh, I could be mistaken, though, but I, I remember they're not really, like, worth going to for loot. They're good for going for combat experience because there's cannibals all over the place, but loot, not so much. The old village is kind of just a, uh, a random marker that serves not too much of an actual purpose. Um, and the armory rune, funnily enough, I don't have marked on my website, which means it probably doesn't have anything notable at that location. Or it's, I made a mistake and it does have something notable and I just didn't mark it because I'm dumb. Either or. So Northern Coast is another location. I don't have this one actually marked on my website at all because it doesn't have much here. The fishing village has some unique recruits that you can get. You've got a... Uh, and technically, I didn't talk about the cannibal capital. It's it's just a bigger cannibal village. That's, again, not much loot there. And uh, the Grand Wizard, I think, leader of the cannibals is there. Um, but that's really it. Northern Coast, the fishing village, has some unique companions you can recruit there. Um, horse, Greenfinger. Um, I think Paya and Soman might spawn there and a few others. Um, that is really it, Northern Coast. This other village you see here, this is a ghost village. And, uh, there's nothing there except for abandoned buildings. And one could reasonably assume that those abandoned buildings are a result of the cannibals. They probably came there, cleared out that village. Also, moving back to the cannibal plains real quick, you see these two scout posts right here? Both of these scout posts are owned by the Flotsam Ninjas, and they are the only safe location in cannibal plains. When you start out as, say, a cannibal hunter's playthrough... You'll start at one of these three cannibal villages, and you'll want to run to these scout posts as quickly as possible. That is the only safety you'll find. So the Iron Trail has one ancient tech lab. We'll go back over to that side, to the to the western side of the map. It has one ancient tech lab, and finally, I can give you probably some of the information you want. So ancient tech labs are locations that have um, ancient science books, engineering researches and AI cores. As the name suggests, it is a technology lab, which means it is stocked with everything technology related. And all ancient tech labs are going to be like that, not just this one, so keep that in mind. So the next zone just below it is, uh, oh, sorry, the ancient tech lab, something else about it, it has a 100% chance to spawn at least one AI core. That's something to uh, keep in mind. So it's a good location to go for AI cores. Purple Sands to the south, this post-ancient workshop. It is a uh, giant hangar-like structure. You'll find one of these in uh, the grid as well. And it is a very good place to find engineering research. Usually there's a wide variety of other loot here, usually trade skill materials, stuff like that. The Shrieking Forest has no notable locations. Um, Raptor Island has one notable location on it, and that is the Mega Raptor. He's found inside of a, uh, like, half-destroyed building that you can find on Raptor Island. Decent for raising your skills against. Um, Floodlands, this is the next one we'll do. Suspicious Lab, so Suspicious Lab has a, uh, it's basically cannibals hiding out in, well, a suspicious lab. And, uh, there's a chance you can find an ancient science book there. Uh, sorry. There's a chance you can find two sets of ancient science books. One chance, uh, when you're on the first floor going up to the second floor, there is a trail of items. Sometimes it's food, sometimes it's just regular books, sometimes there's an ancient science book in there. Essentially, it's a trail, it's like a trail of breadcrumbs that will lead you to the second floor where you'll run into cannibals. So it's like a, it's a, basically a Hansel and Gretel trick. It's cute. Burns Tower. This tower is, uh, one of the loca or the only locations where you'll get the burn skeletal companion there are other skeletons in the game that are named burn however the the skeleton that appears at burns tower is a unique recruit the other skeletons throughout the world that are named burned are not unique recruits only the burn who uh, spawns at this um, tower is the unique recruit empty ruins as far as I remember empty ruins are empty uh, let me check my website though I just have to scroll up to uh, the page yeah, empty ruins are empty. Uh, the Fallen Tower, again, this is just a landmark to make things look more crowded. Leaning Tower uh, has 
usually a variety of loot that can spawn there. I usually find a couple ancient science books when I visit that location. Uh, usually at least one to three. Ancient labs. So this location is going to be a, a spot where you can collect ancient science books, AI cores, CPU units, and uh, a wide variety of engineering research, if I didn't already mention those. Um, and let's see. Ruin tower. That uh, that isn't that doesn't have any loot there, and the final ruin that doesn't have any. Uh, that's another empty ruins too. If you get close enough to it, that's what it'll say. And that is all for floodlands. So obedience it has one ancient labs, which I've already told you what spawns in ancient labs. It's uh mostly ancient science books, AI cores, CPU units, and more. Also engineering research can spawn there if I'm not mistaken. Let's uh let me scroll out a bit so I can get a. Acquainted. Berserker Country has nothing unique. Dark Finger and Sinkan right up here. So first village that's filled with cannibals. Cannibal Village that's filled with cannibals, and Cannibal Village that's filled with cannibals too. Lost Library they all contain the same stuff. We've already been over Lost Libraries when we did uh, the Leviathan Coast. Essentially, it's a uh, it's a locked location with some maps, um, occasional books. Not not that much loot it's got basically like a it's one of the first early game locations that you would explore it doesn't have much end game loot so the bastion if i'm not mistaken this is where the cannibal hunters headquarters is fort simeon that is the rebel farmers headquarters um i actually forget let me check my website i forget if um okay fort simeon Boss Simeon is their leader there. He does not carry a Me Too weapon, and the uh, the Bastion also does not carry a Me Too weapon. So neither of those locations have best in slot weapons. Give me a second. I need to uh, wet my throat because it's. I don't want to start. I don't want my voice to start breaking. So, if we scroll in, you'll also notice we have the Tower of Goats here. As the name suggests, it is a tower full of goats. There is a guaranteed chance to find one ancient science book here. Distant Hive Village. This is a hive village owned by the Western Hive, as is this Distant Hive Village. These are good locations to get Hiver undergarments if you start out on uh, in the United Cities portion of the map over here. Other than that, they kind of they basically serve they serve the same purpose as the hive villages in Dreg or Vein or anything like that. So uh, moving on to the Great Desert, Port North, Port South. These are two slave um, locations owned by the Undercities, Bark, Shobatai. These are all towns in the United Cities. Sorry, I always call them Undercities. Stone Camp, this is another slave camp. Tengu's Vault. This is uh, the Supermax Prison, which is owned by the United Cities. Uh, there are a few unique recruits that you can get here if you clear out Tengu's Vault. Also, the Vault Warden that spawns at Tengu's vault has a uh, me too weapon. I can't remember what it is though. I have to find it on this on my page. Give me a second. If I can find it, if it's on this page. No, it's not on that page. It's probably on the end game page. I forget what the me too weapon is though that he has on him. But he does have a me too weapon that I'm positive of. I think I left it out of my uh yeah, I left I left Skim Sands out because only Tengu's Vault is there, so it's not in the list. Hang, you got Hang and Trader's Edge. These are uh, two United Cities towns. South Stone Camp, both that and Slave Farm are obviously Slave Farms. So Howler Maze, I actually have none of the map locations discovered for Howler's Maze on this file, which uh, surprising. I thought I've been there on this file. So Howler's Maze, let me uh, find it on my website. It has, I know it has a lost library. It also has two unique towns. One is called a, uh, okay, here we go. It has an archive town, which is a town, an abandoned town. It has a couple loot there. Typically, I think I find about two ancient science books when I go there. It also has something called the lost town. The lost town is kind of where you see my cursor at right now. Um, the mega crab boss monster spawns there. He is a uh, very strong, super powerful crab enemy that is similar to the crabs you'll fight during the crab tournament that the crab raiders bring to your base. It is, uh, it, he's actually a pretty good NPC to level up against, if I'm being completely honest. 
gut, the only thing that is in gut that is notable is this strange camp here. There's, uh, I can't remember his name. But there's somebody there that gets pissed off at you if you get near him. And he actually has a decent amount of stats, like high stats, so you can fight him and raise your stats if you would like. He's a pretty good enemy for um, raising your stats against. So the eye, there's nothing in there uh, to be found. Gray Desert has one way station, which uh, is owned by the Tech Hunters. It operates like most other way stations. It has a bar and a... Um, um, a shop. There you go. That's the word I was looking for. So let's move back up the map a little bit. Looking at Bast, there is nothing that you can actually... There's a lot of these locations in Bast that you see, but there is nothing there for you to find. It's just everything is destroyed and there's no loot for you to collect throughout the entire area. So Arm of Ocran right here. It's got Ocran's Fist, as you can see, and uh, this Watchtower, which is owned by the Holy Nation. Ocran's Fist is essentially a Holy Nation stronghold which blocks entry in and out of this area. That is really the only notable thing about it. Ocran's Valley right here, er, and Ocran's Shield, it does the same thing. Uh, actually, Ocran's Fist, I don't think it blocks in and out. I think um, Ocran's Shield right here does because this is a, a path you can take in and out of this area. And Ocran's Shield blocks the, the United Cities people from getting through. Ocran's Fist kind of operates the same way, though. It is a Holy Nation stronghold. There's constantly a war going on in Bass between the Holy Nation and the United Cities, and that is probably their, their closest base for going there. So Ocran's Valley, uh, as you can see, it's got two Holy Farms there. You can buy buildings at those Holy Farms if you wanted to. The environment in Ocran's Valley is not very good, though. It's very, very arid, no fertility and no water, so it's not very good for farming or... Uh, Mining, it's okay, I guess. You just got to find iron and copper close to one another. The farm ruins are meaningless up there. World's End, this is a town owned by the Tech Hunters. Also, there's a section of World's End that is uh, controlled by the um, Machinists faction. They, uh, they're they one of the smallest factions in the entire game, and they uh, will give you unique dialogue depending on whether you talk to them with a human or with a skeleton. It... Aside from that, there's really not much else that's unique about this town. There's no unique recruits to get here that stand out. Nothing else like that. Flotsam Village. This is the stronghold for the Flotsam Ninjas. There are a few unique recruits you can get here, like uh, Paya, Digna, um, Knife, Reva, and I um, think I'm missing one more that you can get there. But there's quite a few. Uh, it's essentially... What the Flotsam Ninjas faction is, is they basically are Holy Nation outcasts. And they uh, they still believe in Ocran, and they still hold true to the Holy Nation beliefs. Except for uh, they're not as bloodthirsty as the current Holy Nation is. That, is. that is the main distinction. So moving down, you got Wend right here. Wend is home of the Armor King, which is the merchant that sells the best armor in the entire game. I, uh... Totally, totally, totally recommend checking him out if you want some best-in-slot armor and you don't feel like making it yourself. One thing he does not sell, though, is crab armor. So uh, if you want that armor, you will have to go get it yourself. Otherwise, he sells almost every type of armor, and he sells it in masterwork special specialist quality. And uh, it's very, very, very useful to visit and hit him up. This loan shack you see here, this is a building owned by the flotsam ninjas it's kind of similar to the scout posts that you've seen in the cannibal plains rebirth this area right here this is the holy nation uh slavery area if you become a slave um and if you become a slave under the holy nation they will send you to rebirth and you will do uh hard labor to repent your sins uh so ocran's gulf you'll see it's got two holy military bases Holy Mines, and it's also got that Dead Hive Overrun up there. The Dead Hive Overrun is essentially just the destroyed town that is overtaken by Fogmen. Not much to see there. Some loot, but really not much. Holy Mines, that's just a little area where uh, Holy Nation people are enslaved, and uh, that's really all there is to do there. There's some, if you want to attack it, you can. There's some loot to grab there, but other than that, it's it's just a like a flavor location, for lack of better words. Holy Military Base, that right there is uh, 
a military base owned by the Holy Nation. Basically just a mass of troops there. Also, if you uh, are being attacked by the Holy Nation anywhere in this area, the, the raids will spawn at these Holy Nation bases. Stack, that's a town owned by the Holy Nation. Ocran's Pride, this is essentially just the giant newbie zone with a whole bunch of Holy Farms. Uh, m m the Holy Farms operate the same way as the other Ocran's Valley up there. So uh, let, me, let me scroll out and get reacquainted. Skinner's Rome is kind of the same deal. There's a few holy mines here. Uh, as also the holy farm up top. Holy mine runes that are just basically dilapidated holy mines. Narco's Trap is the only notable thing that has ancient science books, AI cores, and engineering research. However, that's kind of on the cusp of Skinner's Rome and Iron Valley. It's actually in Iron Valley. So if you go there, you will have to uh, deal with the acid rain. Also, there is a town right next to Narco's Trap which is owned by Holy Nation, and they won't let you inside Narco's Trap unless you go through them first or sneak by them. So you will have to deal with them first if you, you know, decide to go there. Um, let's do Iron Valley before moving anywhere else. Lost Armory, we've already covered more or less what to find in Lost Armories. Again, if you uh, forgot, Lost Armories have... Uh, they usually have specialist and masterwork quality armor or ranged weapons. Um, they usually also come with at least one or two edge type one to three melee weapons. Aside from that, you can find a, a wide variety of trade skill materials there uh, along with a variety of other stuff. So, Dreg, since we're moving over to the left side of the map now, Dreg has a bunch of high villages and it also has a nomad village. I think the nomad village is down where my map, where I'm circling now. Um, hive villages, they operate the same as every other hive village, and the nomad village is basically just a nomad village that sells animals, if I'm not mistaken. Fog Islands only has mongrel, that is the only notable thing to find in Fog Islands, besides the bajillions of fogmen. Vane has hive villages all throughout Vane. Down here in the bottom portion of Vane, it also has a lost library, which I apparently don't have marked on my map for whatever reason. Um... The Lost Library, as always, contains whatever everything the Lost Library typically does. Um, over here, on this island right here, there is a Tower of Fog. It's got a few fog men inside of it, as well as a fog prince. And there are usually some ancient science books you can find inside there, too. A little bit north of that right here, you find the Post-Ancient Workshop. This is uh, much like the hangar that I talked about earlier that's in Purple Sands. You have a good chance of finding engineering research there, as well as a wide variety of different trade skill materials. Also, ancient science books and some other goodies there as well. Northeast of that, you have... Or sorry, northwest of that, you have the Western Hive main island. Right here, I'm pretty sure it is. This is the headquarters of the Western Hive, a.k.a. where you'll find the Western Hive Queen. And, um... There is no um, good dialogue you can have with the queen. Basically, you walk in and they just everybody freaks out about you being there because humans typically don't come out there. If you kill the Western Hive Queen, all of the Hive Villages fall to turmoil and basically all of the Western Hivers go crazy because their queen has been killed. I'm going to wet my throat again at, before I continue with Stun Desert, so give me a second. Apologies. I've been talking nonstop for uh, 23 minutes now, so I need to take an occasional moment to uh, wet my beak, as they say. So Sten Desert. This is kind of like the newbie zone for the Shek. Uh, this ruin here is an abandoned ruins. There is not much notable there. All of the loot that you can find there is scattered across the ground. It is... Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it's all scattered across the ground. And nothing is really notable. There is a Fallen Tower also up here by Admag. Again, Fallen Towers are just flavor. There's not much use they serve. New Kralia, if I am not mistaken, is owned by uh, Kral's Chosen. I think so. I have to check my website. I think, I've, I think I have documented this zone. Yeah, New Kralia is the headquarters of Kral's Chosen and their leader, the Flying Bull. Well, technically just Flying Bull, not the Flying Bull. Uh, the Great Fortress is a mostly destroyed outpost, which has a police station and faction HQ. 
really not much else of note there. The way station that you see on the eastern side of the map, that is much like all other way stations. It has a vendor and a bar. You can find a lot of mercenaries to hire as well as tech hunters if you need protection. And Admag is essentially just the Shek capital city. Um, Isada the Stone Golem is the leader there who carries a Me Too quality fragment axe. She's also protected by the five invincibles, which uh, are super powerful Shek. Sorry, burp. You can also uh, find unique recruits, Kang, Ruka, Rain the Giant, and Orin there. Also, they, uh, the unique recruit, Seto, is also there, but you have to basically, you have to do some prerequisites to recruit her. Such as uh, capturing the Bugmaster or uh, <laughs> Holy Nation Leader. Sorry, hiccups. Very bad time for hiccups after I've recorded for 20 minutes straight. So moving on to spider planes, we have uh, Last Stand, Empty Ruins, and that village you see there is a Berserker village. Last Stand is again a minor Shek outpost, which also has a bar and a few Shek unique recruits that you can find there, like the ones I just mentioned. The Berserker village just has some Berserkers just kind of hanging around. It's mostly destroyed village, not much to see there. Empty Ruins are just completely empty. And the old front lines down here, it's a, just another... Uh, it's just another area where all of the loot is kind of scattered around the ground and everything else is destroyed. So moving on to Arak, this is one of the first end game zones of Kenshi. This unknown object is just a fallen tower if I'm not mistaken. Throne of the Bugmaster has the Bugmaster there. He's a uh, very powerful NPC, one of the more powerful NPCs in the game with very high stats. Although he has no armor, he does have a very powerful weapon, the Foreign Saber. It has the highest defensive bonus of any weapon in the game. And uh, that makes him an especially hard enemy, aside from just the stats that he has. Also, Arak is um, flooded with skin spiders. Much like all of Kenshi, the, uh, the main threat is going to be a battle of attrition. It's not so much... Um, you might be able to take the Bugmaster down, you know, if you have him versus your entire fully healed team but after going through all of Arak and fighting the dozens of skin spiders that attack you you're going to be a little worse for wear by the time you confront the bug master so for that reason it's recommended you bring sleeping bags Shun this is kind of like a it's kind of like a early game town or an early game zone I would say lost libraries again they they don't have much loot they uh Usually you have to lockpick the door in order to get inside and you'll find some vendor trash, maps, and s sometimes I think an ancient science book. I can't remember if I've ever find, found an ancient science book in a library ruin or in a lost library before. The library ruins is uh, basically nothing. It used to be a lost library and then it got destroyed. Abandoned town, it's also destroyed. No available loot there. The only building with uh, notable loot in all of Shun is going to be this ancient tech lab up there, which is going to have uh, a 100% chance to give you one AI core and also has uh, a chance of giving you ancient science books and engineering research. The crater, uh, the only thing that is going to have loot in the crater is this ancient labs right here. There are a few other things in the crater, though, that you don't see on my map. They're just basically uh, destroyed buildings that you really can't even do anything with. The grid uh, has the workshop complex here, which has no loot. However, it has two locations that are on the map, uh, not marked on the map, sorry, south and west of it. Both of those locations will have loot, and they will have ancient science books and engineering research. So let me say. The hook, I honestly don't know that much about. I know uh, basically... There's two towns, both are owned by United Cities. Waystation is, I think, owned by the Tech Hunters. And there was no, there's no notable locations to be found in um, the hook. It's just uh, basically another United Cities zone that probably could use a little bit more love, if you're asking me. So, South Wetlands, this outpost here is the outpost. Uh, it's the Swamp Ninjas outpost. It is a... Uh, I'm, hold on, I'm scrolling up on my website to find, uh... 
the location. There we go. Leader is uh, Shade, a humanoid by the name of Shade. He has a uh, 20k bounty on his head, as well as... I'm pretty sure I already did this zone during this video, didn't I? I think I did this zone at the start of the video, because I'm getting, like, deja vu of reading it. Yeah, I did, because I explained uh, the slave market there and stuff like that. So, let's uh, do the swamp instead. You'll notice the swamp has quite a few towns around it. It's got Rot, Mud Town, Village, Swamp Village, all of this good stuff. These are all towns that have vendors. They not only have uh, typically a bar vendor, they have a um, general general goods vendor, and they also have a drug vendor. Uh, the drug vendor sells fish and hash, and when you come, in, come into the town, he'll shout, Anybody need drugs? Anybody need fish? And that is uh, their, that is their selling point. Fish and drugs. Uh, Swamp Village. That is, I can't remember if, the, I don't think that one has a vendor, actually. Mudtown, I'm 100% sure it has a vendor. It also has a chance of spawning Dr. Chung and Silvershade, two unique recruits. Rot is a, uh, it's got a vendor there. This village is the Gray Flayer Village. It definitely has vendors there. And the Swamp Village has some vendors there, of course, too. This uh, Swamped Lab this building here is uh has some ancient science books it's pretty easy usually there's some blood spiders guarding the the base but that's really it south of that you got the red saber hideout as the name suggests it is where it is the red saber hideout it's where all the red sabers congregate and it's where you can find their leader the red saber boss he does have a me too quality horse chopper these ruins have nothing this stone rat village as the name suggests it is a stone rat village and uh, there's a vendor there, two vendors, I think, a drug vendor and a general goods vendor. And I think a hat vendor too, maybe. This ruin right here is uh, an infected lab, sorry, infested lab. And uh, usually you can find skeleton repair kits and a bunch of other loot on the ground. But other than that, it doesn't have uh, ancient science books, engineering research or anything like that. So moving on to the burning forest, the ancient lab there usually has uh, everything that an ancient lab typically has. Let me uh, scroll down on my website so I can get to this location so I can accurately represent it. Farm ruins is a uh, destroyed ruins without much notable loot and the ancient labs often have different technology based loot such as ancient science books, AI cores, CPU units and more. Uh, when I visited that ancient labs, I found a total of six ancient science books, according to what my website says. So if my website says it, it must be true. I say that partly sarcastically, but yes, I do take a lot of time and effort to make sure the information on my website is accurate. It's a point of pride for me. So if my website does say it, it probably is true because it was probably meticulously researched to guarantee that it was true. And if I could not prove it, then it most likely says on my website that is it that it is unsubstantiated and I will make it known that it is not something that I could personally prove. So Shem, this is another zone that is a, it's a mid game zone. I would say about, yeah, right about mid game. It's got some band of bones enemies with stats in the forties, beak things that also walk around here, dust bandits that are pretty frequent. This uh, settled nomads village has a, uh, the only unique recruit animal in the entire game, it's a goat named Cornelius that is sold here. If I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure this is the place. Smuggler's Bar, uh, this is a bar that is actually owned by the Grey Flayers faction, which is actually part of the Swampers. Uh, so fun fact, this bar would actually sell sake at a, uh, uh, at a decrease because it's part of the, the swamp faction, despite it being not in the swamp. It'll also buy uh, cactus rum at a um, uh, premium because it's part of the swampers faction, despite not being in the swamp. Shem has nothing else that's notable aside from that stuff. Venge, um, I know the one location in Venge is worth pointing out, but I don't think anything else in Venge is worth it. I have to check though. Gosh darn it. I hate when I scroll down and I don't see it on my page. So the Tower of Abuse, I know for a fact, is the most notable location in Venge. It's got uh, Agnew there, who's uh, he's a skeleton. 
He comes with uh, the highest strength of any recruit in the game. Let me, uh, I can actually show you Agnew right now. He, uh, as the name suggests, he is a Futurama, uh, a walking Futurama reference. He references uh, Richard Nixon's other uh, Sp Spyro Agnew, the, the other head in the vat that goes, uh, that is with Richard Nixon in many episodes. But yeah, you get him at Tower of Abuse. Also, Tower of Abuse has two named NPCs, both of which drop Me Too quality weapons. I'm trying to find Tower of Abuse on my list of um, Kenshi lists now, so I can read from there and tell you what it contains. I'm not finding it though right now. It's so hard to do the <laughs> to uh, scroll down my list at the same time as actually trying to narrate it to you and trying to think of stuff to talk about while also trying to read my website and pay attention to what is where. So where is Venge? Seriously. Okay, there we go. Yeah, the uh, the Tower of Abuse is home to uh, Ponk, who you, who has a Me Too hold saber, and Screamer the False, who has a Me Too heavy polearm. Also, the old control tower, which you see over here, is home of the Scavengers faction and their leader, Gutterhead, but he doesn't have any Me Too quality weapons. This way station here, too, this is actually one of the locations you can, you can start out as when you choose... Uh, Nobodies. Um, if you start here after picking the Nobodies playthrough, usually they just recommend you restart because you're you're like way too out in the middle of nowhere. It's it's too far of a run to get to anywhere meaningful. Um, let's see. Border zone. Let's do this zone real fast. This is the main newbie zone of the entire game. Uh, both Rebel Base. This is owned by the Holy Nation Outlaws. It's just a little bar. The hub has one bar and a bunch of towns you can buy, uh, and a bunch of buildings you can buy. Also owned by the Holy Nation Outlaws. Squin is uh, capital of the Sheck Kingdom, or uh, sorry, uh, town owned by the Sheck Kingdom. This Squin is arguably the best noob town in the entire game, and the hub is technically a noob town as well. They're both great. This unknown tower here that you see is uh, owned by the Dust Bandits. It is uh, where the Dust Bandit leader, the boss leader, is. Also, there's a unique recruit that you can get at that tower by the name of Cat. Um, this unknown tower is owned by the Black Dragon Ninjas. If you uh, take out this... Also, uh, I can't remember the name of their leader, but the if you take out the Black Dragon Ninjas that are at that tower, their leader carries a Me Too Ninja Blade weapon. So that's worth mentioning. Um, and if you take out the Black Dragon Ninjas and you have a base in the area, they will stop base raids on, on, on your base. Way Station operates as any other way station. It's got a bar and a vendor. Tiny Settlement, there's a, a bunch of loot scattered around the ground at that tiny settlement. Also, there's something over here. Uh, another abandoned, like, destroyed um, building with a bunch of loot scattered around it. Those are the only notable things to find in the border zone, though. So, let's see. Deadlands. This is something we can cover because uh, I haven't covered this area yet. So Deadlands has constant acid rain going through the town, uh, or sorry, going through the area 24/7, nonstop. <clears throat> Obviously, that's what 24/7 means. Black Desert City is a uh, city that is owned by the skeletons. Uh, every single inhabitant there is skeletons, and there is one unique companion skeleton that you can recruit there at the bar named Sad Neil. Uh, basically, just a depressed skeleton. There's a few Deadland workshops here. All of the Deadland workshops, they are essentially hangar structures, and you can find a lot of technology-related loot inside of them, such as engineering research, ancient science books, and stuff like that. The Lost Armory, again, it's a loot-filled building that typically has one or two edge-type quality weapons. Usually, it also has some specialist or masterwork quality armor to find inside of there as well. Typically, these buildings are not heavily guarded, but you will need lockpicking in order to get inside, as well as open all of the safes that you find inside. Last but not least, in the Deadlands, they also have a reprogramming workshop. The reprogramming workshop contains uh, 26 error code 0x FFFFFF skeletons, which will become friendly to the first unit in your squad they come into contact with, and they will protect you from any and all perceived threats. If if a neutral NPC is walking down the road towards you, the skeletons will attack him outright. So this is something to keep in mind uh, because 
they are going to be a little bit like you can't run into a town with them behind you. So you need to you need to keep that in mind. Uh, usually, what would be best to do is hit up the reprogramming workshop if you're a low level player, and then use those skeletons to visit the dead land workshops nearby, the lost armory nearby, and all of the other things. So, uh, the lost armory, or sorry, the uh, the armory ruins is essentially a lesser version of the lost armory that contains less loot. Uh, it's essentially an area that's already been broken into and already looted. Uh, a lot of items are going to be scattered across the ground in that area, and it's mostly all vendor trash. It's up to you if, if you find it worth looting or not. Uh, so let's say, let me scroll out and see what I've done so far. I think I've done mostly the entire top half of the map, and it's already a 40 minute video. Jeez Louise. We've been talking quite a while, haven't we? So, Storm Gap Coast. This area here, Isaka is a uh, slave area. Brink is a United Cities town. Farming Village is a village owned by the United Cities. Not much notable to uh, mention to at any of those locations. <coughs> the Cult Village is owned by the Preacher Cult faction. There is also uh, a leader here named. Let me find him on my website. Oh, he's named the Preacher, and he carries a Me Too quality Moon Cleaver weapon. He doesn't have high stats, and he's one, this is one of the easiest Me Too weapons to get in the entire quality game. Or, <laughs> I just word salad of that, didn't I? It's one of the easiest Me Too weapons to get in uh, in the game. Fishing Village here, it is owned by the Dead Cat Faction. It also has a few unique recruits that you can find here. Uh, as far as I know, it is the same unique recruits that you can find in the Fishing Village in the Northern Coast. The Forbidden Isle. Okay, I gotta change pages on my website. Hold on, give me one second. Let me uh, take a drink too. Pretty please. Thank you. Okay, so the Spider Factory is home of the Spider Foreman. Uh, we're looking at Forbidden Isle again, just for those uh, who got sidetracked. Spider Factory is home of the Spider Foreman. He's the boss of the area, and he uses a Me Too quality staff. This dungeon is pretty difficult. Uh, however, it does contain some ancient science books, as well as engineering research and AI cores. Uh, the ruin that you see at the top here, this is actually an ancient lab. Ancient labs often have different technology-based loot for you to collect, such as ancient science books, AI cores, CPU units, and more. Of course, there's a chance that you'll get engineering research there as well. Technology-based loot is mostly, like I said, what you'll find. The Outlands. Black Scratch is a tech hunter's town. It is also home of the Great Library, which is where you'll find a bunch of... Uh, the Great Library basically contains more recipes than anywhere else in the entire game. Hands down. That's... That is the, basically... That is the use of the Great Library. Agnew, where are you going? Get back here. Uh, Reaver Camp, this is owned by the Reaver Faction. If you are captured and enslaved by the Reavers, this is where you will be brought. The Unwanted Zone, nothing in there is uh, able to be explored. Stobes Garden Way Station, this is one of the locations that you have a chance of starting out as the Nobody's Playthrough. Also, uh, when you start at this, or sorry, this Way Station in particular has a bunch of loot scattered across the ground. Again, it's one of those locations where you can run around picking up loot off the ground and really like the best items you're going to find are stuff like skeleton muscles, skeleton eyes, and uh, and stuff like that. It's, in my opinion, by the time you can actually come into Stobes Garden and survive this zone, it's not even worth looting. Reaver Camp, again, we explain what that is. Reaver Camp, again, we explain what that is. Ark, this is headquarters of the Reavers. It is run by somebody named Valamon. He is uh, the leader of the Reavers. He also is wielding a Me Too quality longsword. Uh, a lot of people find Ark and Valamon to be one of the harder locations in the game. A big tip that I can give to you is pull the enemies outside of Ark. Don't run inside to fight them. Pull them outside. Green Beach has two crab villages, as you can see. Crab villages are home of the crab raiders. Uh, each of these crab villages has a vendor that will sell crabs as a, uh, and I think also the northern crab village has a uh, armor vendor too. But you won't be able to use either of them until you become friendly with the crab raiders. 
the uh, let's actually come back to the pit later because that has uh we'll go we'll we'll dive into that later. It's one of the end game zones. Stobes gamble, free settlement up here. Uh, free settlement can actually turn to the free city if you take out <coughs> the un, uh, United Cities leaders. Um, you have to take out Longin, Tengu, and uh, I think somebody else while Tin Fist is alive, and then it'll switch. It'll be converted to free city, and it'll actually turn into a city too, with buildings and a few buildings you can buy. It'll have a bar, a vendor, all that good stuff. Secret drug farm. This uh, has some hash that grows there, um, a few security spiders that protect it, and I think that's it. Otherwise, it's mostly abandoned. It's actually a good spot to hit up early game and uh, sell all of the loot in Flats Lagoon. You can just go to the secret drug farm, grab all the hash, and then run over to Flats Lagoon and sell it for a 400% price markup. Crumbling Labs. This, uh, I can't remember. Does this have loot? I think it does, right? Yeah, there is some loot scattered around the area. Trades, go materials, vendor trash, weapons, and armor. But the main attraction that is uh, to be found here is uh, the King Gorilla. He's the uh, the big black gorilla. The the big white gorilla is in Morn, which we'll get to in a bit. Old Empire Supply Outpost. This has a... Uh, it's kind of like the Lost Armory. It has a wide variety of loot. Special, specialist and masterwork quality armor, as well as some edge type 1 quality weapons. And a variety of trade skill materials. You also have a chance of finding the ancient neutral rations here, which is uh, a unique food that you can't find anywhere else in the game, except for the old Empire Supply Outposts. Expedition Five. Uh, it's essentially just a lore place. It's uh, tech hunters made that expedition at some point in the past when they were trying to explore the area south, and uh, that's one of the the one of the towns that they set up and then eventually had to abandon because it was too dangerous to the south. Spring is a town owned by the anti-slavers. This is home of Tinfest. Aside from that, there really is not much notable uh, stuff there. Flats Lagoon right here. This is a town owned by the Tech Hunters. And uh, the there's a few notable things about Flats Lagoon. It's one of the only places in the game where you can buy ancient science books uh, as well as engineering research and uh, Also speaking of towns that sell ancient science books. We missed this black desert city There's a area right next to black desert city right here called the scrap house This actually sells AI cores ancient science books and engineering research Also the scrap house sells the best quality weapons in the entire game. You can buy edge type 3 weapons here uh, Pretty commonly it also sells a few unique uh, recipes that you won't get anywhere else, such as the um, the fog mask, which is a light arm. It is the best in slot light armor uh, head armor you can get. It also sells the falling sun recipe, which is uh, one of the highest damage melee weapons you can make in the entire game. It's the only places to get those recipes in the game. Also, World's End, one of the towns we talked about early on up here. World's End also has a chance of selling ancient science books. Or, sorry, it does sell ancient science books. And uh, for those of you curious, no, they never restock. Unless you import the game, uh, the, those vendors will not restock. High Bone Fields has nothing, um, nothing there. No notable locations, nothing like that. I'm just doing a once over to make sure I got all of these zones before we start moving into the bottom right. Yep, I'm pretty sure we covered all of that. So, let's uh let's start moving into the bottom right. So, Bonefields, it's got Morn, which is owned by the Tech Hunters. It's a very small town. Uh the only the main thing that I guess uh Morn is known for is the great white gorilla that you find there. He is in uh one of the lab buildings up at the top of the town, I guess is the best way to describe it. Uh, another thing that's nice about Morn is it's basically encapsulated by giant iron mines. Um, so if you want a safe town to mine in, that isn't uh, that isn't the worst town to do it in. Um, essentially, the only other thing that's worth mentioning about the town, I guess, is it has a 400% price markup on uh, hash. 
It's one of the two towns that people use along with Flats Lagoon. Katoon, this is a town that is owned by the United Cities. It is also uh, the one human owned town in the game that sells the best quality weapons. It can sell up to Katoon quality three, uh, which is the best humans can make. The other, the, the MK one through three, as well as the edge type one, two and three, they're all made by skeletons. Uh, the old prison, this is the headquarters of the Gorilla Bandits. And uh, I know there is, uh, give me a second. It is, uh, their leader Gorilla is here and he wields an exile plank Me Too weapon. Um, there's also a few other loot to be found in the surrounding area as well. One thing that's worth mentioning about uh, in the... And by that I mean like in the chests on the shelves and stuff like that. But it's mostly all vendor trash. Another thing that's worth, worth mentioning about Katoon is... Uh, as with all United Cities towns, you'll find a few unique recruits here. You have a chance of running into Izumi, Jewel, Ridley, and Hamut. Those are all the, uh, the unique recruits that you can find there. Further south, we have Fish Isle. Fish Isle or Fishman Island. Fish Isle is the uh, main town of Fishman Island. It's essentially a destroyed town which is overrun by gurglers. Those are the main enemies here. They are essentially just like... Uh, I would compare them to Fogmen. They kind of have the same mechanics. The second your characters get knocked unconscious, they'll be kidnapped by gurglers, taken back, and then eaten alive. So it's kind of the same deal. Gurglers also have gurgler eggs on the ground, uh, which sell for crap and I don't recommend picking up. There's also a lot of fish you can find on the ground too, which is actually good for feeding yourself. The island lab that you see down here, this uh, is home of King Gurgler. And uh, he uh, drops a Me Too combat cleaver. Also, um, this the island lab is a very good chance of finding ancient science books, engineering research, and AI cores. So moving on to uh, Cheater's Run. This is essentially just um, nothing. Horrible Ruin has skin bandits. Uh, if you go inside one of the buildings, they'll pursue you. Dead Fishing Village, I think, has skin bandits too. Police Barracks has uh, police skeletons that will pursue you to the ends of the earth once you activate them. And yell police. Uh, Royal Valley has Southern Hive Villages here. I think it might, might also have a Hive Reclaimed Armory up top, but I could be wrong. The Southern Hive is home, is headquarters of, as the name suggests, the Southern Hive. Uh, the Southern Hive Queen you'll find inside the Southern Hive. However, the Southern Hive King patrols around the entire uh, perimeter. Like he patrols all the way, uh, like all throughout Royal Valley. Also, the Southern Hive King is uh, the single, single highest stat enemy in the entire game. He has, uh, I think, some stats in the 200s, which is kind of insane. Um, the best way to take him out is with ranged characters, I would recommend. So, Gray Shelf, this is essentially just an adjacent area owned by the, the Southern Hive. Hive Reclaimed Armories, they're kind of similar to Lost Armories. They kind of contain the same amount of loot. Armory Ruins, they, uh, let me read from my website for these because I'm kind of forgetting. Apparently, uh, Grey Shelf is in the end game list. Let's see. Hiver. Yep, it is. Okay. Armory Ruins, yeah, they're lesser versions of Lost Armory. Southern Hive Village is essentially just a small little village, kind of similar to the Western Hive Villages, but instead, they're all hostile to you. Uh, there's a lot of vendor trash to be found there, building materials, food, weapons, armor, cats. Hive Reclaimed Armory, like I said, it's similar to Lost Armory slash Old Empire Supply Outposts, with the main difference being that it's controlled by Hivers. There's a decent amount of loot to find here, but it will be guarded by drone guards, so just keep that in mind. That's really all to mention about those. So, Sniper Valley, Police Barracks, again, Police Barracks, they have Police Skeletons. The Old Empire Supply Outpost, this is, uh, like I said before, they contain loot that's kind of similar to the um, Lost Armories. 
uh, usually masterwork, specialist quality armor, couple pieces of it, usually a edge type 1 to edge type 3 weapon, sometimes 2 or 3 of those, and aside from that, a wide variety of other loot, mostly vendor trash, trade skill items, stuff like that. So, the crags, you'll notice it's got Iron HQ, this is the headquarters of the Skeleton Bandits. Um, let me, uh... Their leader, Elder, is found here. He carries a Mew 2 quality ringed saber. Old Empire Supply Outpost. Again, good loot there. And Reaver Camp, that, as you can see, is on the edge of the crags and also Stobes Garden. So the pits. As aside from this police barracks that you see on the map, to the north, there's also a lost armory right up here. And there's also uh, a sniper tower right down here on this little island. Uh... So the Lost Armory, you, I've already been over them plenty of times. they filled with different trade skill materials as well as typically one or two edge type quality weapons as well as specialist masterwork quality armor, yada, yada, yada. You need decently high lock picking in order to get inside. Police barracks, <coughs> again, filled with skeletons that yell police and chase you to the end of the earth. Sniper Tower is a unique location, which is a... Uh, it's a large tower filled with skeleton snipers uh, that basically they're skeletons that are sitting on turrets that shoot at you from a very long distance. Um, that sniper tower there protects the one good route in and out of the Ashlands. Right here, after you take out the sniper tower, it will be a great way to get in and out of the Ashlands. Because if you run through Sonorous Stark, you're going to have to deal with all the skin bandits there and... Uh, they'll usually wear your group down quite a bit by the time you get through, which is not good. That's everything for the pits, so let's move on to the pits east. Dead Workshop here. Let's see uh, what my website says. It's a hangar-like structure which has mul multiple chests on the platforms throughout. You'll find a lot of ancient science books there as well as engineering research along with a variety of other trade skill materials and stuff like that. Crab Town. That is the main headquarters of the Crab Raiders faction. This is where you're going to get the crab armor recipes. Uh, you will also find unique recruit Lumi here. Uh, the only place in the game that you'll be able to find her. Uh, depending on what you want, you'll have the option of becoming an ally to the Crab Raiders faction, which will give you access to the vendor that sells the crab armor recipes, or you can just destroy the entire town and loot the crab armor recipes off of the blacksmith's corpse. To each their own. I personally think the crab raiders faction is worth becoming friendly with because uh, they will protect you when you are in this area. And this area is kind of like the end game area of the game. So, so aside uh, from what you see on my map here, there's also going to be a lost armory up here. Right? Let me see. Yeah, there's a lost armory up here. That is not on my map. So that is one thing to keep in mind. Because I'd, uh, it's, it's in the screenshot that I see on my website, but not this screenshot. Or not in this video, rather. So, Sonorous Dark. We're almost done. We're, on a, we're in the home stretch now. We're in the last two zones. After talking for an hour straight. Um, <clears throat> skin houses. These are basically areas that are owned by skin bandits. Uh, these are... They, these are where all of the peeler machines are. If you are knocked out and kidnapped by skin bandits, you will be taken here. Your character will be uh, stripped of their armor and gear, stripped of their weapons, and then eventually stripped of your limbs if uh, you don't get them out of there soon enough. So it's it's a very dangerous spot, for lack of better words. And uh, definitely, it, in my opinion, this is the hardest zone in the game, Sonorous Dark. Also why I chose to build a base here. Both skin houses operate the same. Skin house HQ kind of operates the same as the skin house uh, headquarters. However, this is the headquarters of the skin bandits. This is where you'll find their leader by the name of Savant. Uh, and Savant, aside from being their leader, he has a uh, um, unique recipes for the peeler machine and the human skin suit that you can't find anywhere else. The peeler machine is a... Uh, definitely something that's worth getting in my opinion because it allows you to basically rip the limbs off your characters yourself and then you can replace them with uh, skeletal limbs which give you a much larger benefit than <coughs> your normal fleshy limbs barrier tower 
So this kind of uh, operates almost exactly like Sniper Tower. There's going to be a large wall that you see that connects from Barrier Tower to the, the cliffside. And it basically prevents anybody from going by. So again, it's basically blocking easy access in and out of the Ashlands. It's just one of those, you know, locations to stop your, your advance, basically, or to slow your advance. Once you clear out the Barrier Tower, it won't respawn and you'll be able to easily run by, yada yada, so... And last but not least, we are finally at the Ashlands. So Ashland Dome 1, 2, 3, and 4 all have unique loot. They all have uh, ancient science books, engineering research, and AI course all have a chance to spawn there. As well as a variety of masterwork and specialist equipment. Also, uh, Edge Type 1 to Edge Type 3 weapons can also spawn there. And uh, every single one of those Ashlands domes is going to have a named skeleton, which will drop a Me Too quality weapon. So, uh, Ashland dome number one has the head of agriculture who wields a short cleaver Me Too weapon. Ashland dome number two is uh, under the control of Rhinobot who wields a topper Me Too weapon. Um, Ashland dome number three is run by General Jang who wields a Guardless Katana Me Too weapon. Ashland Dome number four is home to General Hat 12, who uh, has a Heavy Jit Me Too weapon. And last but not least, you have Catlon's Exile. This is home of the end boss of Kenshi uh, by the name of Mad Catlon. He, uh... He's the end boss. He has uh, stats in the hundreds. Well, I think exactly 100 are his stats. And there's technically two Ashlands domes in this area. One has Mad Cat Lon, and there's an adjacent dome to him, which has 120 Storm Thralls. Um, if you don't take out the Storm Thralls before attacking Mad Cat Lon, then I'll aggro all 120 Storm Thralls, and they'll run in and attack you. So, keep that in mind. And uh, that's really all there is to it. I'm pretty sure we covered every zone. I might have missed a zone. Um, if I did, please let me know in the comments section below. If I left anything out, got anything wrong, or forgot anything, or you guys think I should have included something that I didn't, please let me know in the comments section below. Um, it's always nice to get all of the information out there. And that this is the, the, the biggest synopsis I've ever done of the entire world of Kenshi and what to expect in each and every location. So... With, uh, with all that said, if this video helped you guys out and you enjoyed it, please leave me a like because that helps me out. And aside from that, I will catch you guys around in future Kenshi videos. Peace.